milk comes in and your body's like, oh, you want a milk? You want a milk? I'm gonna give you some milk. And then all of a sudden you wake up with your Dolly Parton boobs. Hello all of you beautiful birthing people. Welcome back to my channel. You are looking absolutely stunning today. And by stunning, I might mean a little bit glowy. And by a little bit glowy, I might mean hella sweaty because it is so hot outside. But we're gonna pretend like it's highlighter and we're gonna go with it, right? So first off, I want to say happy World Breastfeeding Week, everybody. This is such an exciting time. There is so many great information on breastfeeding online, on Instagram, on YouTube. So I just wanted to add a video here for you guys. This one's going to be all about plugged or clogged ducts and mastitis. What can we do if we have them? What can we do if we want to avoid them? And why do we care so dang much about them? So I have here my bowl of goodies to kind of show you guys some things that we can do, one of which involves a potato, so stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and first we're gonna talk about, we're kind of gonna go on a journey, a journey of milk stasis and infection and possible abscess. We're gonna start off with a plugged or clogged duct. So what is a plugged or clogged duct? Simply, it is a duct of milk that is unable to empty for whatever reason is caused by the milk not being removed from your breast. When the milk isn't removed, water portion of the milk can be reabsorbed into your vascular system, right? Because our milk is made in our blood. And so that kind of leaves behind some milk that is a little bit thicker and is unable to be removed from the breast. And it causes some pain and some tenderness in that area. Whenever I've gotten clogged ducts, they're almost always on my right side and they're like up in my armpit because, pro tip, your breast tissue extends all the way up into your armpit. Then typically it's because we have some sort of oversupply or engorgement typically early in our breastfeeding relationship when our milk comes in and your body's like, oh, you want a milk? You want a milk? I'm gonna give you some milk. And then all of a sudden you wake up with your Dolly Parton boobs. It's a look and it's a thing. This can be because of a poor latch and poor transfer. Pro tip, lots of clogged ducts and mastitis can be due to a lip or a tongue tie. This also can be caused if we're wearing clothing that's really tight on our chest, if we perhaps are starting to wear underwire bras, sometimes those can cause clogged ducts, although this is not in everybody. And you're gonna find too, some people are just more prone to clogged ducts and to mastitis than others. The reason why we care, okay, right? Obviously they're uncomfortable, first and foremost, they're uncomfortable. But we have some milk that is sitting static in our breasts. It affects our breast microbiome. So really what we're learning about the breast is that our breasts are very similar to our gut in the fact that they have their own microbiome. They have their bacteria that is found kind of in everybody's breast milk and viruses and pathogens and all sorts of different things in this live substance that we're producing, which is breast milk. But when we have milk sitting static and not moving, right? in these plugged ducts because they're not being able to be emptied, that is when we see that this microbiome is messed up. We know that your milk flow creates a natural flushing mechanism, kind of keeps everything moving around in your breast, which is good because when things are stagnant, there is a chance for overgrowth. Normal pathogens that are a part of our microbiome suddenly are like, well, everything's messed up, I'm gonna raise hell now. And those start multiplying more quickly than they should, leading to an infection in your breast. Now we move on to mastitis from our plug ducts. That's when we often have feelings like we have the flu, like just so run down and so tired, really dizzy, lightheaded, difficulty standing up even, and we have a fever. So a fever is considered over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Also, often with mastitis, we might see a cracked nipple involved as well. That might be an area in which we have bacteria enter the breast. But regardless, when you have mastitis, we need to be having a conversation with our doctor. Now with mastitis, the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine recommends and try everything that you would try with a plugged duct first in the first 24 hours or so of the infection 
And then if it's not getting any better, go ahead and start your antibiotics. And if your antibiotics haven't made you feel significantly better within the first 48 hours, you need to get your milk cultured and see if you need a different antibiotics. And this, I think, particularly during this pandemic, is going to be key. We wanna be making sure that we're following up, that one, we're taking our whole prescription, but two, if our prescription's not working, if the antibiotics is not making us feel significantly better, we need to be following up with our OB because chances are you've called them and you've gotten a prescription based on a telehealth visit over the phone for your antibiotics, but we need to make sure that those antibiotics are actually working. We don't want you to fall through the cracks and have mastitis that has not been treated adequately because it can actually lead to sepsis, so an infection all over your body that would require hospitalization. But that's not super common. What's more common is that your protective cells will wall it off to keep that infection not from becoming systemic, but in doing so, it will create a pocket of infection that's filled with pus or other fluid known as an abscess. And they can happen either when we have an abrupt weaning situation or infectious mastitis that is not adequately or properly treated. And when you have an abscess, that opens up a whole new can of worms with difficulty breastfeeding and pain and discomfort. Often when we have an abscess, they're going to use an ultrasound with guided imaging to actually use a needle to aspirate and drain that abscess. Antibiotics will often be prescribed with an abscess as well. But what can we do, right? I just told us worst case scenario, right? Let's dial it back a few notches. Let's talk about plug ducts and what we can do to help prevent those so that we can prevent all of this other really unpleasant stuff going on. Ugh. First and foremost, we wanna make sure that we are adequately draining our breast with breastfeeding or with pumping. We wanna make sure that we're properly emptying. We wanna make sure that baby is latching appropriately, right? Our latching should not be painful. It should not be causing cracks or blisters when baby's latching. If it is, we need to be seeking help from an international board certified lactation consultant to make sure that that is not happening. We wanna make sure that baby does not have a tongue or a lip tie because we know that this can inhibit milk transfer leading to plugged ducts and mastitis. So let's say we've got a plugged duct now. Probably you're watching this, you do. What can we do to help get that inflammation down, get that clog out, and get the milk out so that we don't have milk stasis leading to a change in our microbiome of our breasts? So, ibuprofen is gonna be helpful with swelling and with pain. Definitely talk with your doctor before taking any medications that I'm recommending, but generally an over-the-counter ibuprofen can be useful. About 20 minutes before you need to pump or breastfeed, a little bit of ice on the breast, again, can help with that inflammation. And then immediately before breastfeeding or even during breastfeeding, heat can be so helpful. We can have heat from a variety of sources. A disposable diaper filled with warm water can be great for some moist heat on the breast. Lansano makes these really great breast pads that can be microwaved and they also can be frozen and they will sit around your breast. And so you can have those on when you're breastfeeding, they have a little place for your nipple. And you can put the heat wherever the clog is to help kind of loosen things up. I want you to think about your clog as a traffic jam because that's what it is. There is a traffic jam and milk is not able to get past the traffic jam. And let's say your clog is, is right here. When we are massaging, we're not gonna massage back behind the clog because what's that? is going to do is actually push that milk into the clog, causing another accident and even more of a backup. What we're gonna do is do a massage in front of our clog to help move things along. One way that we can do massage is by using something that vibrates, like an electric toothbrush. So using that electric toothbrush in front of the clog to help things move through. There are also lactation devices that you can purchase that have heat and vibration. La Vie, I believe is how you say it, I will link them down below, has some like that. These have heat and vibration. I used these when I was exclusively pumping. They were fine, but I honestly preferred this. If you are putting baby to the breast still, one thing that can be a great option is dangle nursing. So that's when you're gonna lie baby on a flat surface, like your bed, and then you are going to be on top of them in all fours and breastfeed this way. 
it's awkward, it's not cute, but we can use gravity to help reduce and remove that clog. Another recommendation that is pretty commonplace, but we now actually know that it's not really 100% true, is that you wanna have the baby's chin pointing towards the clog because that's where their strongest pulls are going to be coming from. Well, that kind of takes in the understanding that our breasts work with very straight roads and systems that go back to our ducts from our breasts. That's kind of the general picture that you see of a breast. When you hear about breastfeeding and lactating, that's the picture that's been in our textbooks for years. But really what we're understanding now is that things are a lot more intertwined and meshed than that. And so while your clog might be over here, having the baby's chin pointed this way doesn't necessarily mean that there is a direct line from this clog all the way down to the breast that way. Does that make sense? But it is important to change the position in which you're breastfeeding to help rotate where baby is pulling the strongest. This can help with sore nipples. This can also help adequately draining your breast. Another option if dangle nursing isn't working, this is one of my personal favorites. You can do this in the tub as well, but I always found a good amount of Epsom salt in a bowl with water as hot as you physically can stand. Really nice hot water and hand expressing into the bowl. So what you would do is you'd have this like on a counter, something where you could bend over and actually place your breast into the water and then hand express your breast. And that to me has always really worked well to get out clogs. A lot of people do this with the haka. So Epsom salt, hot water in the haka is another thing that people do. If you're somebody who gets clogged ducts often, Right? Maybe your milk is a little bit fattier, it has a hard time fully releasing, leading to that milk stasis and perhaps frequent mastitis. And you, you kind of have been checked out for the lip and the tongue ties, latch and everything is looking good. One thing you can try is lecithin, which is a supplement that you can take that is a fat emulsifier that'll actually help that fat break down a little bit better and come out a little bit easier in your milk. But again, consult with your IBCLC and your OB or medical doctor if you are going to take any supplements or medications. There is a potato trick that can help with mastitis or a clogged duct. It needs to be done within the first 24 hours of symptoms appearing, but it definitely can help. I learned it from one of my lactation consultants that I work with and it worked for one of my coworkers and it actually worked for me too. So what you're gonna do is take a few potatoes, you're gonna cut them up, and you're gonna put them in some cold water. I don't actually have potatoes here to show you, so I'm going to use some play food. Let them sit in that cold water for 15 to 20 minutes, and then you are going to take those slices and replace them on the affected area inside your bra for 15 to 20 minutes, and then replace them every 15 to 20 minutes. You're gonna do this process two to three times in an hour, and then you're gonna take a 20 minute break, and then you're gonna do it again. And what it does is it helps reduce the redness and the swelling associated with the mastitis, which hopefully we can get the plug duct to clear and reduce your mastitis, perhaps reduce your need for antibiotics. Doctors should be able to prescribe you an antibiotic that is safe for you to continue breastfeeding through. And if they are unsure, they often might tell you to stop breastfeeding. But ask to speak with an international board certified lactation consultant, call your hospital where you delivered, and they can check and make sure that an antibiotics prescribed to you is going to be compatible with breastfeeding. And if it's not, then they can work on helping the doctor find an antibiotics that is compatible with breastfeeding. I hope that this video has been helpful to you guys. I feel like so much of our breastfeeding education really focuses on getting baby to latch in those first few days. But once your milk comes in, it's almost like you're high and dry, you're at home. So I know that a lot of us deal with plugged or clogged ducts and have dealt with mastitis and these things are not fun they are miserable and I hope that this video has helped you find a way to properly treat both of those things at home or seek the medical guidance from your doctor if mastitis is developing so that you are adequately covered and your breastfeeding relationship can continue as you hoped for bye guys